introduction and preface to scenes in the life of harriet tubman this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by sue anderson scenes in the life of harriet tubman by sarah h bradford introduction the following little story was written by mrs sarah h bradford of geneva with the single object of furnishing some help to the subject of the memoir harriet tubman's services and sufferings during the rebellion which are acknowledged in the letters of general saxton and others it was thought by many would justify the bestowment of a pension by the government but the difficulties in the way of procuring such relief suggested other methods and finally the present one the narrative was prepared on the eve of the author's departure for europe where she still remains it makes no claim whatever to literary merit her hope was merely that the considerably numerous public already in part acquainted with harriet's story would furnish purchasers enough to secure a little fund for the relief of this remarkable woman outside that circle she did not suppose the memoir was likely to meet with much if any sale in furtherance of the same benevolent scheme and in order to secure the whole avails of the work for harriet's benefit a subscription has been raised more than sufficient to defray the entire cost of publication this has been effected by the generous exertions of william g wise esq of this city the whole amount was contributed by citizens of auburn with the exception of two liberal subscriptions by garrett smith esq and mr wendell phillips mr wise has also consented at mrs bradford's request to act as trustee for harriet and will receive invest and apply for her benefit whatever may accrue from the sale of this book the spirited woodcut likeness of harriet in her costume as scout was furnished by the kindness of mr j c darby of this city s m h auburn december first eighteen sixty eight preface it is proposed in this little book to give a plain and unvarnished account of some scenes and adventures in the life of a woman who though one of earth's lowly ones and of dark-hued skin has shown an amount of heroism in her character rarely possessed by those of any station in life her name we say it advisedly and without exaggeration deserves to be handed down to posterity side by side with the names of joan of arc grace darling and florence nightingale for not one of these women has shown more courage and power of endurance in facing danger and death to relieve human suffering than has this woman in her heroic and successful endeavors to reach and save all whom she might of her oppressed and suffering race and to pilot them from the land of bondage to the promised land of liberty well has she been called moses for she has been a leader and deliverer unto hundreds of her people worn down by her sufferings and fatigues her health permanently affected by the cruelties to which she has been subjected she is still laboring to the utmost limit of her strength for the support of her aged parents and still also for her afflicted people by her own efforts supporting two schools for freedmen at the south and supplying them with clothes and books never obtruding herself never asking for charity except for her people it is the purpose of aiding her in ministering to the wants of her aged parents and in the hope of securing to them the little home which they are in danger of losing from inability to pay the whole amount due which amount was 
partly paid when our heroine left them to throw herself into the work of aiding our suffering soldiers that this little account drawn from her by persevering endeavor is given to the friends of humanity the writer of this story has till very lately known less personally of the subject of it than many others to whom she has for years been an object of interest and care but through relations and friends in auburn and also through mrs commodore swift of geneva and her sisters who have for many years known and esteemed this wonderful woman she has heard tales of her deeds of heroism which seemed almost too strange for belief and were invested with the charm of romance during a sojourn of some months in the city of auburn while the war was in progress the writer used to see occasionally in her sunday school class the aged mother of harriet and also some of those girls who had been brought from the south by this remarkable woman she also wrote letters for the old people to commanding officers at the south making inquiries about harriet and received answers telling of her untiring devotion to our wounded and sick soldiers and of her efficient aid in various ways to the cause of the union by the graphic pen of mrs stowe the incidents of such a life as that of the subject of this little memoir might be brought up into a tale of thrilling interest equaling if not exceeding anything in her world-renowned uncle tom's cabin but the story of harriet tubman needs not the drapery of fiction the bare unadorned facts are enough to stir the hearts of the friends of humanity the friends of liberty the lovers of their country there are those who will sneer there are those who have already done so at this quixotic attempt to make a heroine of a black woman and a slave but it may possibly be that there are some natures though concealed under fairer skins who have not the capacity to comprehend such general and self-sacrificing devotion to the cause of others as that here delineated and therefore they resort to scorn and ridicule in order to throw discredit upon the whole story much has been left out which would have been highly interesting because of the impossibility of substantiating by the testimony of others the truth of harriet's statements but whenever it has been possible to find those who were cognizant with the facts stated they have been corroborated in every particular a few years hence and we seem to see a gathering where the wrongs of earth will be righted and justice long delayed will assert itself and perform its office then not a few of those who had esteemed themselves the wise and noble of this world will begin with shame to take the lowest place while upon harriet's dark head a kind hand will be placed and in her ear a gentle voice will sound saying friend come up higher s h b the following letters to the writer from those well-known and distinguished philanthropists hon garrett smith and wendell phillips and one from frederick douglas addressed to harriet will serve as the best introduction that can be given of the subject of this memoir to its readers letter from hon garrett smith peterborough june thirteenth eighteen sixty eight my dear madam i am happy to hear that you are to speak to the public of mrs harriet tubman of the remarkable events of her life i have no personal knowledge but of the truth of them as she describes them i have no doubt i have often listened to her in her visits to my family and i am confident that she is not only truthful but that she has a rare discernment and a deep and sublime philanthropy with great respect your friend garrett smith 
letter from wendell phillips june sixteenth eighteen sixty eight dear madam the last time i ever saw john brown was under my own roof as he brought harriet tubman to me saying mr phillips i bring you one of the best and bravest persons on this continent general tubman as we call her he then went on to recount her labors and sacrifices in behalf of her race after that harriet spent some time in boston earning the confidence and admiration of all those who were working for freedom with their aid she went to the south more than once returning always with a squad of self-emancipated men women and children for whom her marvelous skill had opened the way of escape after the war broke out she was sent with endorsements from governor andrew and his friends to south carolina where in the service of the nation she rendered most important and efficient aid to our army in my opinion there are few captains perhaps few colonels who have done more for the loyal cause since the war began and few men who did before that time more for the colored race than our fearless and most sagacious friend harriet faithfully yours wendell phillips letter from frederick douglas rochester august twenty ninth eighteen sixty eight dear harriet i am glad to know that the story of your eventful life has been written by a kind lady and that the same is soon to be published you ask for what you do not need when you call upon me for a word of commendation i need such words from you far more than you can need them from me especially where your superior labors and devotion to the cause of the lately enslaved of our land are known as i know them the difference between us is very marked most that i have done and suffered in the service of our cause has been in public and i have received much encouragement at every step of the way you on the other hand have labored in a private way i have wrought in the day you in the night i have had the applause of the crowd and the satisfaction that comes of being approved by the multitude while the most that you have done has been witnessed by a few trembling scarred and footsore bondmen and women whom you have led out of the house of bondage and whose heartfelt god bless you has been your only reward the midnight sky and the silent stars have been the witnesses of your devotion to freedom and of your heroism excepting john brown of sacred memory i know of no one who has willingly encountered more perils and hardships to serve our enslaved people than you have much that you have done would seem improbable to those who do not know you as i know you it is to me a great pleasure and a great privilege to bear testimony to your character and your works and to say to those to whom you may come that i regard you in every way truthful and trustworthy your friend frederick douglas end of introduction and preface